straight jacket there. My name is Pastor Bill Crabtree. It's been my honor to get to be Phyllis and Lloyd's pastor for many years now, and the family. I want to gather us together in the words of Psalm 118, which is an Easter psalm. This is really Easter for our sister. In distress, I called to the Lord, who answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. I shall not fear. What can anyone do to me? I was pressed at the point of falling, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord this is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. And from Jesus' words in the sixth chapter of John, he says what clearly is the truth for Phyllis. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and let's gather with this beautiful hymn, Beautiful Savior. Oh. 
sins brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels in the sky. Beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of God and Son of Man, glory and honor, praise and oration. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Phyllis. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And Elise is going to share in some reading of our first two readings. <clears throat> no. Okay. <clears throat> we are going to read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me into still leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. <clears throat> your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now we're going to read Ephesians 2. <clears throat> For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works so that no, no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> have my wind skills today to keep this from blowing away but um, first of all thank you all so much for coming out today to celebrate the life of our mom Phyllis Clavin and say goodbye it means a lot to our family to see so many of you here today who were so important to mom in her life over the past two months I've had many conversations and communications with mom's relatives both locally and in her roots back in the Midwest in California there's one consistent word that everyone has used in talking about Phyllis. She was seen by, as a very special lady by all who knew her. What is it that made Phyllis in her life so special? It's that she was continually giving to others. Let me share a few highlights. 
A friend growing up once told me how important our job was to be sure that we raised our parents correctly. <laughs> I think Mark and I did our part in doing that, and Rondi came along as a blessing and reward for mom surviving raising her two boys. <laughs> for Rondi, the only time I can ever remember her being in trouble was on our trip to live in Pullman in 1968, following a 56-day trip to Alaska. Phyllis had to drive the truck and camper with her three kids. I don't think she'd ever driven the truck and camper before. <laughs> Greg and Mark got to ride up in the cab with mom and Rondi had to ride in the back in the camper. We could do that back in those days when we drank out of garden hoses and did things like that. <laughs> Rondi finally had enough of being alone in the back and started kicking the window next to the cab until it finally broke. Mark won't let her forget that one, but mom had to be a pretty special lady to get all three of us by herself to Pullman in that truck and camper. I was described by some of my relatives as the little boy who needed two mothers to keep track of me. One of the stories that's finally shared is when Gary Short arrived one day, there was Phyllis out chasing Greg with a rake. I had driven my tricycle into a deep puddle and was just out of reach, grinning at my success. Mark, on the other hand, was more like Humpty Dumpty, who had to keep being put back together again, whether it was falling off the ski lift, stepping on a bee's nest, crashing his bicycle, mom was always there to patch him up. I think that's why Mark went into physical therapy, but it took a really special lady to survive raising Greg, Greg and Mark. Another thing about mom that made her so special was her sweet tooth. In Santa Ana, Phyllis worked as a soda girl at Mary's Cafe in the summers. She took great pride in the fact that she was able to have a hot fudge sundae every day after work. <laughs> when you visited her at home, there were candy dishes in every room, literally on just about every piece of furniture and oftentimes more than one. And she loved cookies, baking them and eating them. Mom became known as Grandma Cookie to our children. At Christmas time, Mom would faithfully make all of her Norwegian cookies and many others so she could fill up her huge collection of cookie tins to distribute to others, especially the pastors at the church. They had to get their cookies. <laughs> A natural born teacher, Phyllis put her skills to use teaching Norwegian folk dance to the youth at, for the Sons of Norway for a couple of decades after she retired as a first, her, from her career as a first grade teacher. She'd be at every parade, every festival, both as a participant and leading the young dancers. When she could no longer do the dancing, Phyllis continued to be in the Viking festival parade, riding in the Viking ship. Her Norwegian heritage was an important part of her life. She was a founding member of the Bremerton Daughters of Norway and the longest serving cultural director for the Sons of Norway. The importance of remembering family and friends was another special talent for Phyllis. If you had an event, a birthday, a graduation, an anniversary, anything at all, you were gonna get a card from Phyllis. You're gonna get a card from Phyllis. I believe she's going to be in the Hallmark Card Hall of Fame <laughs> as she had achieved the platinum level for Hallmark and I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> True, Phyllis really truly was a special lady. As we look back on her life, we also remember her for these things. Phyllis was an outdoor lady and considered herself a country girl. She learned to hunt and fish with Lloyd and survived many adventures with him. Phyllis loved being outside and in her garden. She was surrounded on her patio by many, many pots filled with plants that got her tender, loving care. And Phyllis was devoted to the Lord and service to her church. Pastor Bill shared that she may have been the most faithful attendee he's ever had for his classes. And as we come to a close, I want to share a wondering. For anyone who ever spent a Christmas Eve with Lloyd and Phyllis, we all knew it was going to be a battle. The lutefisk versus the peas. Dad wouldn't put the lutefisk in until he knew the peas would be ready. And mom wouldn't start the peas until she knew the lutefisk was going to be ready. There were not going to be any baggy peas on her watch. I wonder who's going to win in heaven. 
So, and as far as the theme about being special goes, for anyone of you that ever saw Phyllis's garage, you know that she never threw anything away. It was filled with boxes and boxes of everything. What you don't know is that every box was labeled with a sticker with the following rating system. It was either special, very special, or very, very special. <laughs> Mom, you are a very, very special lady, and we will all miss you. And someday, maybe 20 years from now, when we get through all of the boxes, we'll celebrate yet another very, very special day. God bless you all. It's not raining. It's snowing. Snow or whatever this is. Very special. Yeah. yeah very, very special. special. <laughs> We're going to take this as a kind of blessing from God. Thank you, Greg. Well, I want to read. When I think of amazing women, I think about some of the women on the pages in the New Testament and some of the followers of Jesus like Martha and this is an encounter of Martha and Jesus from the 11th chapter of John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again, Martha. And Martha said to him, well, of course, I know he will rise again on the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And whoever lives and believes with me will never die. Do you believe this? Ah, oh, she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I want to celebrate everything that Greg said, and I want to hone in on where we're standing, a little bit of what I shared out here on Easter at the sunrise service. When I think of Phyllis Clavin, I think about a legacy that she and many others who are laid to rest here have. Phyllis loved the Lord. As Greg said, she was at every Bible study with really stumped Pastor Bill questions, of course. <laughs> she loved the scriptures and she loved the Lord and she loved the church. It's folks like her that built the church, whether we're talking about Silverdale Lutheran or whatever congregation. And when I preside, as I'm doing now, for someone like Phyllis, I think about the amazing gift that we have in this church and the amazing responsibility that the gospel continued to be preached. That was what was at the heart of her life. That's the engine that drove her compassion and care. I was talking to my mother-in-law, Laura, who lives at Krista Shores, and, and Phyllis would just show up with some goodies and to say hello, and even during COVID, she'd leave it at the front for her. It's acts of compassion like that, teaching the kids that she taught all those years, so many things we can we could keep celebrating as the snow is falling <laughs> but i want to just end this way i also know she loved to teach others to dance and it, the Nor her norwegian heritage you know was passed along with that martha looked at Jesus says, I know you're the resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And what that means is that this is not the end of Phyllis Clavin. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a horrible thing 
if this was the end of this amazing woman. But no, we lay her elements to rest today, knowing that even in a way we can't imagine that she's dancing with the saints. And I, it's got to be in Norwegian. I mean, <laughs> and she's with the Lord. And then we'll look forward to that day when we'll all be gathered around that great feast and dancing together again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's respond to the good news and confess the faith that is our hope today in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join me in a time of prayer. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, in holy baptism, you've knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die daily to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage and faith to all of us who mourn, to Phyllis's wonderful family and her and Lloyd's legacy, to her church family and this whole community, all of her friends and family. Give us all a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all of our sorrow on you, we may have strength for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. God, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that we can, as Phyllis did, cling to the word, cling to your promise for hope and life each and every day. That we can build up the church as Phyllis did so that others now and in many decades to come will also hear the good news of what you've done for us all in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, death has lost its sting. And in that, we commend to Almighty God, our sister Phyllis. Ensure in certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend Almighty God, our sister Phyllis Claven, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Amen. And we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. 
Oh, man. <laughs> Let's get to the benediction. And I think Phyllis would get a kick out of this. People of God, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you all complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yep, for singing her favorite song? Sure. All right, let's do it. I'm good. It's still not raining. <laughs> this was Phyllis's absolute favorite song, and it's hard to get through, but with your help, we'll do it. I was there to hear your now shares in that one more surprise she shares in that surprise she is with the Lord so let us go forth in the in peace in the name of Christ amen God's peace amen amen so we're going to place her beautiful urn um, in a spot and some flowers are going to be placed. So, yep. <laughs> yes, thank you very much so much for coming today and for our, our immediate family and members and that if you want to come we have a rose for you uh, and Jennifer will help pass those out.